Good morning, my friends. I'm sitting on our back porch at my grandmother's patio table. I want to show this to you. This patio table belonged to my grandparents. My Mimi and dad are. My Mimi died first, and after my dad or died, my dad was gracious enough to bring it all the way out from Arkansas to here where it could sit on our back porch and we could sit around it and have meals just like we did so many times there. And I love it. I keep it painted and cleaned up and I'm so, so glad that it's here. It reminds me all the time of my grandmother, my Mimi, and all of us grandkids would laugh as soon as I said this, but Mimi was known for her honesty and her transparency. She told you exactly what she thought, even when you may not want to hear it. She would tell you to stand up straight. She would tell you to quit talking about other people. And she would tell you, she would tell me to do the best that I could do. And that no matter what, she loved me. I miss her dearly. And I've been thinking the past few days and wanted to come and sit at her table and give one more reflection on the stewardship campaign. And I honestly think this might be the last one that I ever do. In subsequent years, perhaps I just send this one out to the parish to remind us all what it is that we're really doing. I want to draw on Mimi's and her inspiration for me in terms of honesty and transparency and just be honest with you. I need to tell you I'm sorry that I apologized. I approached this year's campaign as a way where I could come up with clever ideas and gimmicks. And I was wrong to do that. Last night I couldn't sleep because I thought I've approached this in a way that doesn't take it seriously enough. It doesn't do it the credit that it deserves. So I wanted to send this note out to all of you and start over. Stewardship isn't something that you can come at with a clever gimmick. And I, to be honest, to get in touch with my inner Mimi. I'm tired of approaching stewardship in terms of gimmicks to see what ways that staff and vestry people, what gimmicks and clever slogans and clever videos that we can use to entice the parish to give. And I want to reflect on that with you this morning in a compassionate but honest way. The church still struggles with this perception that people give to the church, that members give to the church, as if the church is a separate thing from themselves. It's an enormous struggle and it's an illusion, it's a lie, and we continue to trip over our own feet. The church is not some separate thing, the church is you, the church is us, the church is me, the church is my family, and the church is each and every person who participates in the life of it as Christ's body on earth. So to come at a stewardship campaign based on a series of gimmicks to try to entice people to give to the church is false. And we shouldn't do that. Instead, we should come at it with honesty and transparency and sincerity and say that the work that we are called to do, the work that we are called to share in, to share in God's mission, should be taken seriously and we should be honest about what it costs us. It costs each of us. We're all called to participate in that with our time and with our talent and with our financial resources. There should be no shame or embarrassment in talking about money. Rather, we should see it as energy, to be blunt, to see it as a way that we each can contribute to our common life as the body of Christ on earth. So. I refuse to come at it anymore in terms of gimmicks and clever slogans that will entice people to give to the church as though it's something separate from themselves. I can't do that anymore, and I can't lose sleep. If I'm honest with you, this time of year is entirely too stressful for so many. Reba and I and others on the staff, the senior wardens, and the vestry as a whole spend approximately two months, two months, focusing our attention on the stewardship campaign to do all that we can do to bring in pledges. That is time away from the mission and the ministry of the church that we're all called to share in. This week alone, we've had three funerals, three. 
We've had two others in the parish whose loved ones have died that we've been in touch with them in funerals and other locations. We've had alarm systems malfunction that we had to spend half a day on getting in touch. We had, um, we've had several things. We've had ongoing bulletin and worship planning. We've had ongoing development with children and youth. So I just lift that up to you to make you aware that the parish is thriving and the parish is busy and the parish is full as a spiritual community. Part of the challenge that the church must face, and this is what we've talked about in terms of this image of what a contemplative reformation looks like. Part of the challenge that the church must face is this movement from a certain perspective that sees the church as a club and has members. This membership mentality and superficial club identity. We must move beyond that. And we must move into a space that sees the church as a spiritual community marked by a heightened consciousness of our identity in and with each other in Christ. As Thomas Keating says, the greatest thing that separates us from God is the thought that we are separate from God and also the thought that we are separate from each other. And the church is an institution, a body, whose focus is to, to raise our level of awareness of God's presence in our lives so that together, empowered by the Spirit, we can bring hope into the world and remind those around us that hope is possible and that hope is present to them. So we shouldn't come at it in terms of clever gimmicks to entice people to give to the church. That's the wrong way to do it. Rather, we should spend our time and our energy cultivating that deeper awareness of God's presence within us. That takes a full spectrum of embodiments and things that we as a spiritual community focus on. There are some who still see that the church has certain overhead costs that must be kept down. I want to disagree with you and I want to tell you why. In the church there is no overhead cost. Every single thing that we do is an embodiment and a sharing, a participation in God's mission, whether it's paying for light so that groups can come and talk about the um, opioid crisis or um, Habitat can meet. We can host blood drives. If you see the character and moral development as our children of our children and youth as an overhead cost, I disagree with you. If you see our shared worship of God that grounds us in this awareness of God's presence in our life, if you see that as an overhead cost, I disagree with you. And I want to walk alongside you because the church must make this transition away from this club mentality where we're members in a consumer-driven society. We must move away from that and we must move into a greater awareness of our shared union with each other in God through Christ. If we don't make that movement, we will fail. And that's the degree of sincerity that I think I need to have with myself. I need to be honest with myself about what keeps me up at night, and that's what keeps me up at night. This continued call that I have as your priest to focus on that and to invite that conversation, it's risky, but to channel my inner Mimi, it's honest. It's honest and it's true. And I think given what we're facing as a culture and as a society, I think we must be honest with ourselves to say this spiritual work must be done. We are the church. We're the body of Christ in the world. We shouldn't be afraid to say it. We shouldn't be afraid to name what we need to name. We shouldn't be afraid to say to each other what this costs to do this together, to share in this ministry. So I want to send this to you with deep gratitude for what we have shared, what we have experienced these six years that my family has been here with you. I want to thank you. Thank you for being you. I don't want to thank you for giving to the church. I want to thank you for giving to yourself and for becoming more and more aware that you are the church. So I hope and I trust that you'll participate in this year's stewardship campaign not out of a sense of giving to some organization that provides a service to you,
but that you participate in this year's stewardship campaign because you're giving to yourself. You're giving to yourself as the body of Christ in this world that desperately, desperately needs to be reminded of hope and goodness and peace and love. So blessings to you. And come by sometimes and we can sit at Mimi's patio table and share a cup of tea. God bless you all and thank you.